Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, and we are reading from Mark chapter 4, verses 14 through 20. I love the fact that God counsels us with every step, with every trial, with every challenge, with every temptation. Starting at verse 14, the sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, hmm. and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things enter in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Hmm. Yes, and these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. Hmm, something to think about, huh? And I ask, which one are you? Hmm, now, one thing that I know that God wants to caution us about is not allowing stuff to choke out the word that's in you. You see, when persecution comes, when trials, when tribulations come, and on top of that, the temptations, the lusts, and the drawing of our flesh, when those things come, it is really, mm, it's easy for many. I've seen many Christians who walked with the Lord five or six years. And then when it was their time to go through, they didn't go through too well. The word in them was choked and it started becoming unfruitful. And it was like, I don't care what the word says. I don't care what God says. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. I'm out of here. And they get angry and they get resentful, and they move on, and they move on in the wrong direction, and worse comes to worse. Instead of where he says, where the word was sown on good ground. Now, not everybody's going to bring forth a hundredfold. You're going to see some born-again Christians, some of you, that are bringing forth fruit. Some of you will bring, bring forth a lot of fruit and some of you will bring forth little fruit. I say, whatever you do, bring forth some fruit because without the fruit, there is no hope. You got to have some fruit showing up in your life. There must be, and some of you don't know what fruit is. There, you must see change. You must see growth. Take the measuring rod. What's the measuring rod? The word of God. Take the measuring rod. Compare yourself to it and say, okay, now, two years ago, and this is how you encourage yourself in those areas. Two years ago, I would have knocked somebody on their fanny for doing that. Now, I just get annoyed. That's growth. You're growing. You're developing. You're maturing. That's fruit. You see this tube. This tube has complete moisture lotion inside of it. Now, here comes life. We're going to shake it up. Life shakes you up. 
Mmm. With life comes a shaking and a baking. And oh boy. All right. Now, now that we're totally upset, the pressures of life come. And here comes the squeeze. There's the squeeze. I'm squeezing, y'all. Look what's coming out. What comes out? What comes out is what was inside. And what was inside was lotion. Now, what if, trying to think of something that's not too gross. What if mud was in here? When I squeezed the tube, what would have come out? Brown, nasty mud. Right. What if rotten apples was all mashed up and squeezed in here and I pressed it? That would have come out. Right? I'm going to rub this and get it on my skin here. I don't want to sit here and hold it. But my point is, now, because, now look at this. Thank you, Lord. Oh, this is coming right on the fly. Okay. Because this is lotion, it has a benefit to it. The tube is squeezed. That's you being squeezed by the pressures of life. What comes out of you could hurt people or bless people. Well, see, this is lotion. My skin is dry. I'm 66. I'm a dried up old hag. And I need some lotion. So what is this lotion doing for me? It's benefiting me. It's benefiting me. What's inside of you must come out. And sometimes God allows the pressure. He allows the pressure to squeeze all that old funky stuff. Get all that nastiness out. All that old rotten flesh. He gets all of that out. He lets life squeeze it out of you. And when all the stench and all the stuff is blown over, now you're empty, nothing left. Now he can fill that spot with more of his Holy Spirit, more of his love, more of his peace. But you, the two, must go to God to be filled. It's on you to ask God to replace all that old poison with his holiness, with his goodness, with his patience, with his mercy, with his forgiveness, with his understanding, with his wisdom, with his kindness. Now, my skin feels better. Look at that. Look at that. I benefited. I benefited from the pressure that this poor sap had to go through. I benefited from the fruit he bore. I benefited from what came out of this tube. Let's call this tube Brother Appleseed. This Brother Appleseed, I go to church with him. And he's really going through. Life is pressing on him on the left and on the right. Isn't that crazy how life does that? We're God's people. Why should we have to go through? Why? Because Jesus said, that's the way it is. It is what it is. Anyway, moving right along. So my question to you is, when there's a little pressure, when there's a little frustration, when there's a little conflict, a little friction going on, and then pressure comes in to add insult to injury, how are you going to respond? How, what's in your heart? What are you feeling when that happens? See, when I find myself starting to boil up, mm -hmm, first thing I do, first thing I do. Now, okay, let me say this real quick. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I do in a second. When you eat something and it doesn't agree with you, and your stomach starts to churn and knot up and go through changes. Yeah. And you start to cramp up. Mm -hmm. And the gas starts to well up in you. And, and, and the soreness starts to come. And you start to feel the pressure. And you know something's moving. Mm -hmm. You know it's moving down and ready to move out. What's the first thing you're going to do? 
make a beeline to the restroom. You're not going to sit there and let your body do what it's going to do and sit in it. The same way you should not allow your emotions to move in whatever direction they want, whenever they want. You have control. You have authority. You cover that bad boy in prayer immediately. You start feeling that thing well enough, you put that fire out with prayer. Put it out. Listen, I remember one time, <laughs> I remember one time, oh my goodness, I was standing, this was, that was my first miracle when I learned that that really worked. I was standing in my living room. And then I'm going I'm to share with you what I did ever since then, because I didn't finish that statement. I didn't, I didn't complete. But there's one thing you must always do immediately, and I'm going to demonstrate it to you. I'm standing there looking out the window. I am six months old in the Lord. No, I take that back. Two months old in the Lord. I was really new. My father was in the hospital. And I kept begging the doctor to let him come home so I could take care of him because I knew how to take care of people. I had a nurse's aid certificate or certified nurse's aid, whatever you guys want to call it. And I knew how to handle the, the uh, hydraulic lift. I knew how to do the chucks, the, how to do all of that, the bed baths and all that. Okay, so I'm sitting up there angry because he was supposed to come home that day. And I got a call saying they couldn't wake him up. So instead of bringing him home, they sent him back to Huntington Hospital. Oh, I was ticked. I said, oh, they messing. They messing. They don't want to let go of that money. That's all that is. They're not doing anything with him. I was getting all angry. So I was so upset. Listen, y'all. I was so upset. I said, now I'm talking to the Lord about it. Now, this was funny. I said, Lord, if they don't send Pop home, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get dressed and I'm going to go down and I'm going to take Pop out and I'm just going to take him home. They're messing. They're playing games. I'm going to take him home. Forget that. They're playing games. and I don't want them hurting him or making him worse. And Oh, I was, I was up in arms, totally up in arms. And this was so crazy. <laughs> I was so up in arms, y'all. I was ready. I told the Lord, I'm going to go down. If I got to cuss him out, if I got to kick booty, I'm going to go down and get my father out of there. And I'm not playing. And I mean, the tears were just flooding my face, flooding my face, flooding my face. And I was a very emotional person, still am. Thank God for his Holy Spirit. But anyway, so here... I'm standing there at the window and I'm, I'm angry, seething, I'm boiling, getting ready to explode. I'm going to go get dressed and I'm going to do all my exploding down there. And boy, when I explode, it's a mess. So I'm getting ready to go. And this song, this music, I had my station back then when we had AM and FM radios. I had my channel on 93 point something it was a it was a christian station back then and it was all christian music and this is the song that came up i had never heard it before mm -hmm. we must wait 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 on the lord we must wait i don't want to wait wait on the lord wait on the lord we must learn our lessons well. In his timing, he will tell us what to do, where to go, what to say. But Lord, I want to go down and get him out. Wait on the Lord. But Lord, they messing with my father. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the What am I supposed to do? Nothing. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, God, you got a big mouth. Okay, Lord. And this is what I did. Now, I learned from that point on to do that every single time. Immediately, 
instead of going to that point of emotion. <laughs> Lord, would you take this anger out? Would you take my frustration out? Would you take my rage out? Because I'm ready to really go off. Ah! And I literally, literally felt I dug around, dug around. Where did it go? It's gone. I'm not angry anymore. How did that happen? It was within two minutes. Gone. Completely gone. And I felt it going. I'll never forget that. And within a week, my father was home with me on Thanksgiving Day. And I took care of my big daddy till he passed away, till the Lord called him home, kissed him on his forehead and 30 seconds later, my father drew his last breath. And that was it. And I had led him to the Lord, too. After he came home, saw the change in me, he knew there was a God. Two weeks after coming home, he gave his heart to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So what I found is even after that, taking care of him was a challenge. Yes, it was, because... My life was confined to another person's needs. And I was still battling my own selfishness. So having to do that, every time he would get on my nerves by calling me, I had to call on God to give me the ability to do it willingly, not grudgingly. So that by the time I got to him, all that attitude I was feeling for being called on once again was gone. And I learned every time I feel that welling up, douse it with that cold water, the cold water of prayer. Lord, take it out. Now, when it comes to life, you're dealing with all kind of people on the job. You're dealing with all kind of people. You're dealing with yourself. There are times I make myself angry, y'all. I get frustrated with me. I get downright disgusted with myself. And even then I have to ask God to give me the patience with me that he has with me. See, life will happen. You either can't pay your bills or you got a flat tire or you get a, a moving violation that you got to pay who gobs of money for. But, you know, I mean, all kind of stuff can happen. So right at those moments, you really need to go to God. L let me share this with you. One day I was, I was riding in the car with a guy who had done time in prison. All right. He was on parole. He was from another state. He had crossed state lines, which is a felony offense. Had about, oh, my goodness, he had all kind of uh, warrants out. Let me show you what it, what it, how good it works when you're in the middle of a crisis, a threatening situation that for all intents and purposes naturally can only go one way. And this is what I love about God. This is what I love about God. Hmm. Here we are. Cops pull us over. It's drizzling, just lightly misting. Cops pull us over. He's sitting there looking like it's over for me. And I said, y pray. Don't just sit there, pray. I'll be praying too. I'm going to pray that God lets the, that makes them let you go. And he's like, you know, he's like, okay, whatever. Because he, he didn't know what to say about it. So I'm praying. I'm binding the devil. I'm casting him down. And I'm praying that God will please uh, grant mercy and not allow them to take them in. Lord, send your angels, do whatever you got to do, touch their hearts, whatever. But don't let them take them in. They had him get out of the car, turn around, put handcuffs on him. They told brother man, you got a $4,000 warrant out for your arrest. Now, I'm telling you stuff I've seen firsthand. This ain't in the Bible. I've seen God's work. I've seen his power. He's scared. I'm praying. I ain't got time to be scared. I'm praying. 
And he's sitting up there with his hands behind him, looking like a whooped puppy. And I'm steadily bringing this thing to God. Lord, intervene, intervene, intervene. These are cops. They know what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to take brother man in. $4,000 uh, uh, warrant out for his arrest. He crossed federal, uh, state lines. That's a felony offense. It's time to go back to the, to the slammer. Prison, baby. They put him in the car. I'm steadily bearing down in prayer. They do all the research, all the little stuff they do, you know, finding out what his background is and all that. Next thing I know, they got him getting out the car. And they walking him over to our car, his car. <laughs> And they said, okay, look, this is what we're going to do. Because they had me get out the car, too, because they didn't know who I was. They checked my license and all that. And they said, well, you, you know, your driver's license is up, to, is up to par. Are you willing to drive this man's car? And I said, yes. They said, if you drive the car and we don't see him behind the wheel, we don't want to run into him ever again. Or he's going in. It's raining and we're tired. Hello, did you hear that? It's raining and we're tired. So we're going to let you go this time. They took the handcuffs off, brother man, escorted him to the passenger side. I got in the driver's side and we took off and I was praising God all the way down the road. I was like, did you see what just happened? Did you understand that was God's intervention? That was miraculous. That doesn't happen. See, when you take it to God instead of reacting, things happen, miracles happen. That's why the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. Ah, oh, he will direct your path. He'll direct your emotions. He'll direct your circumstance. He'll change directions. He'll do all kind of stuff to make sure that you're safe and sound. Mm. Do you hear what I'm saying? One time, my husband rambled, meandered, not rambled, meandered, in the living room, got turned around because he was 100% blind, thinking he was going one direction was going another. And his son had left the front door open on, on his request. So he forgot the front door was open. I'm in the bedroom. And all of a sudden, it comes on me to pray. Listen, listen how God works. It comes on me to quote Psalms 91 over Milton. The Lord shall give his angels charge over Milton in all his ways, lest he dash his foot against the stone. No weapon formed against Milton will prosper. All of these scriptures are coming and coming, and I'm quoting them over the next thing I hear. And I'm like, oh, God, what's wrong? I jumped up. I ran to the door. Can't see Milton. Milton, where are you? I hear him grunting and groaning. He's at the bottom of the staircase, free fall, down the steps tumbling like a snowball. I said, Milton, don't move. I got down there. I held him. I said, don't move. I want to get up. Don't move. I started quoting scripture. No weapon formed against you will prosper. There will be no broken bones. There will be no harm. There will be no injuries. There will be no lasting residual effects. This is over. God is healing you. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. And I'm holding him. And I said, slowly, Milton, do you feel any pain? No. Okay, wiggle your toes. Wiggle your feet. Let me up, baby. Wiggle your legs. Okay, move your fingers. Okay, turn your head to the right, to the left, slowly. All right, now I'm going to help you ease up. Let's sit up on the step. And then I helped him up the stairs after he got the shakes over with. He was fine. He was deeply bruised in his thigh and his hip, but no broken bone. No hairline fracture. Walked on a cane for about three weeks, and that was the end of that. When you turn every moment, every second over to God, 
Who knows what might have happened if I had just helped him get upstairs and found out he had a fracture because I didn't speak the word over him. I didn't consult with God before I let him move. I t already told you the story about my knee landing on my knee all fell out the bed right on my kneecap. And I would not move till I quoted all the word I could think of and asked God, numb it. I can't, I don't have time. I don't have time to be nursed over. I have to take care of my husband. Numb it, please, God, please. Let there be no residual negative effects down through the years. Never, ever. Sure enough. My knee was numb. It got numb while I was laying there. And then when I got up and started walking, I could, my leg had feeling. But when I touched that area, numb, completely numb. And it stayed numb for a year and a half. And, and then after that, it started itching. And I knew God was allowing the feeling to ease back in. Now I've got all my feeling back in this knee. It's crazy how that happens. That's crazy. Every moment of your life should be given to God. Every second, every incident, everything, every emotion, every thought. Casting all your cares on him because he careth for you. See, leaning on God, if you got to have a crutch in life, it better be God. Because the crutch that God gives works miracles. The crutch that God gives reverses damage, null and voids damage. Ah, eliminates problems that don't necessarily have to be. What are you taking to him? Or are you going to handle this on your own? You just going to handle your life. You grown, you three times seven, you can handle it. Okay, you go on and handle it. You're going to make a mess. You don't think you will, but you're going to make a mess if you don't let God handle every, every single issue in your life. See, when he says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light, take my yoke upon you. When he says that, we don't realize that Life can be a ball of fire. Life can be full of drama. Life can be one upheaval after another upheaval, one flood after another disaster, after sudden destruction. It can be all that if you let it. Or all that stuff that's too big for you to eat, you can hand it to God. You ever play basketball? I got to do this demonstration, y'all. Give me a second. This is what came to me yesterday when I was praying about this message. So give me a second, y'all. Okay, now, now, basketball, right? We playing basketball. We bouncing that ball, getting ready to shoot the hoop. Oh, we see the hoop. We want to shoot. And, and somebody says, pass the ball, pass the ball, because somebody else is way closer to the basket. But I want to get the point. No, nope. teamwork, pass the ball. So you pass the ball to the teammate. The teammate jumps up, dunks that bad boy. It's, it's in like Flynn. And your team gets the point. Now check it out. Check it out. This is what God showed me. <laughs> this cracks me up. You're bouncing that ball. You're going through life, bouncing your way along, right? And you on your pivot foot, you doing all the little moves, all of that, right? And then all of a sudden, bam, Satan throws something at you. So here comes, here comes what Satan's throwing at you, all right? It ain't basketball no more, y'all. But think of basketball. Satan throws it at you. Now you're a team. You and God are a team. So what do you do with the ball? Hmm? Do you decide what you're going to do with this crap that Satan threw in your life? Or are you going to immediately, whatever he threw at you, get it off your hands and toss it up to God? Let God do the slam dunking. Let God win that point. Let God fight your battles. Satan throws it at you, you get rid 
have it. He throws another one at you. Get rid of it. Don't hold on to it. Let it go. Let it go. It's not going to do you any good to hang on. What happens in basketball when you hold on to the ball too long? Oh, the ball goes to the other team. You lose it, don't you? Yeah. It's a violation because you held it too long. When you hold on to stuff, Satan throws your way. You have held it too long and now you're in violation and you end up paying a consequence for choosing to hold on to it. Let it go. Pass it. Pass it to the one who's got your back. He never misses. You do. Let that crap go. Pass it. Crap, pass. Lies, pass. Disrespect, pass. Financial difficulty, pass. Pass it. It ain't yours to handle. There's a song a friend of mine wrote. Cast your burden upon the Lord. Her name is Rebecca McCullough. He will sustain you. He'll not suffer you to be moved. You don't have to try to make it on your own. I'm serious. It, we don't realize. <laughs> mm. The chorus goes like this. Leave it alone. It's not yours to handle. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. It's not yours to handle. Cast your burden upon the Lord. He will sustain you. He'll not suffer you to be moved. So why are you hanging on to that crap? Let it go. I'm done on that. I hope you take my advice. Cast all your burdens on the Lord. God bless you.